Okay, Dr. Mindy here today, and I wanna actually talk about one of my favorite topics, which is, do men and women need to fast differently? So this is the last of a series that I've done over the last week on fasting. Uh, we did a, a specific fast called an autophagy fast in my resetter group. Um, really good results. It was a low protein, uh, intermittent fasting mixed with some eating a lot more fat at certain times of the day. Um, and people got really good results. So but a lot of weight loss. So people were losing, you know, up to eight pounds in five days, which is really cool. And, but what I, what I heard from a lot of people and what I feel like in the keto and the fasting world is so misunderstood is that women absolutely need to fast differently than men. And let me simplify this for you. So women, as women, we need to think about our cycle. So I'm gonna to talk to those of you that have a cycle or have some, even if it's a regular. So if you're premenopausal or going through menopause, this is not for those of you who are after menopause. We'll talk about that in a moment. But if you're having a cycle, there is one week out of the month that is the absolute worst time for you to fast. And that's the week right before you get your period. So let me explain why. Your body, when an egg is released and it goes into the uterine lining, when it's sitting inside of there, unfertilized, and it is waiting for the uterine wall to start to shed. And as it, at once the, the, it gets a signal of progesterone to that utero lining, it will start to shed and you get a period. But if you're really low in progesterone, your uterine lining is not going to shed as much. And a lot of you will notice that as, oh, my periods are really irregular. Some of you will notice that as I get a ton of anxiety right before I actually have my, my cycle. And the reason that you're either getting anxiety or your periods are irregular is for a lot of women because they do not have enough progesterone. Now, what does this have to do with fasting and what does this have to do with the keto diet? In order to make progesterone, there are certain foods that your body really needs and they are not keto foods. They are foods like beans, squashes, potatoes, sweet potatoes, which I know some keto people will, can, can factor in a sweet potato, um, rice, uh, um, even grains, although I'm not a huge fan of grains, but if there was a time for you to carb load, it is that week before your cycle. That is the absolute best time to carb load, to get it from those specific foods that I just mentioned. And it is the worst time for you to fast. So if you're going really low in keto, if you're fasting a lot and that, one, that week comes around, there's a large chance you're not making enough progesterone. And again, it's gonna make anxiety go up. It can, it can throw off your periods. So I really cannot emphasize enough that men and women need to do this different. Men can just jump into a fasting and have no problem. What I see with women is that they jump into keto, they jump into fasting, they get so excited about it, they love how they feel, and they're scared to go and eat these carbohydrates but you need them. You really need them, especially the week before your period. So I wanted to leave this as my last message to a, you all on autophagy fasting, because autophagy fasting is awesome, except you don't want to do it the week before your cycle. So just, I want to simplify it for you. I have a whole ketobiotic reset for women. I'm actually in the process of restructuring it. Um, so if you want a, a ketobiotic reset handout for women, just put keto for women in the comment section and I'll make sure that you get the new guide that's coming out tomorrow on my website with that keto for women on there. Um, and it'll, it'll explain how you fast and how you do keto all around your cycle. Um, the other thing, I, I had a conversation with many of my patients this week about weight loss, and I've been thinking a lot about why so many people lost so, such or had such great weight loss success with the autophagy fast we did last week. And I realized that what you may not know and what we aren't taught in, in our culture is that your body is actually programmed to burn energy from fat. That is its preferred source of fuel. 
but when you're high in toxins, when your blood sugar's all whacked, when your liver is congested, your body gets mixed up and it forgets that it has to burn uh, fuel from fat. It doesn't know that. So even if you think about, you know, the fat is one of those areas where the body will store toxins. So if the liver is really congested and you have a lot of toxins and you're like dieting and dieting and dieting and you're trying to get your body to burn fat for, uh, for fuel and it's not doing it, there's a deeper reason. So, and I'm really going to go into this over the next couple of weeks as we go into the holidays. Uh, I call it the metabolic reset. And there is a way to tap in to your body's natural in inclination. It's an own innate intelligence to release weight. There's a way to tap into this, and that's what I want to teach you because we can get everybody off the yo-yo diet if you understand the principle of how the body lets go of weight. So, go ahead. We have a question? Question on postmenopausal women? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. I, I will come back to that. So, don't let somebody didn't let me off the hook. Awesome. Appreciate that. So, if you want to know more about how to get your body to do the natural metabolic reset, just put metabolic reset in there and I'll send you some information on an event that I'm live streaming, I'm doing live on January 5th. Um, so, I, I feel so passionately that women need to understand how to safely lose weight. They need to understand how they, they got themselves uh, in that weight, stuck weight position in the first place. Okay. Postmenopausal women, I did not forget you completely, uh, so thank you for bringing it up. Um, here's the thing with postmenopausal, if you do not have a cycle at all, then you really can do fasting whenever you want. Having said that, I do. if you're getting great results with keto, you're getting great results with fasting, and you're scared to do some feasting, you have to throw in some feast days. You don't need to do the week before your cycle because there is no cycle, but you need to every week at least throw in one feast day. So with my postmenopausal women, we I have them do those hormone building days at least one day a week. And if anxiety is high, you know your progesterone's really low, then I recommend that once a month you take s several days in a row and really focus in on bean squashes, those kind of things. You don't need to time it to your cycle but you're still vulnerable to the low levels of progesterone that occur with being postmenopausal. So if anxiety is really is the biggie, when anxiety is really high or you're not sleeping well, you love all the other pieces of keto and fasting, just make sure you're varying it with some of these what I call hormone building days. And uh, because that's really important. I, I really see this over and over. I, I experienced it myself and I'll share more of that in the coming weeks. But I love keto. I love fasting. I love how my body feels on it. And as a 49 year old woman who's, who's going through the process of menopause, I have to be really intentional about increasing these carbs so anxiety doesn't go up. So um, I hope that helps as always. I just really want you guys to gather this information. It's easy on social media. It's easy on YouTube to just take bits of information. I really want you guys to understand how to apply it to your life because nobody's a better doctor for you than yourself. And you're going to, the more you learn and the more you empower yourself, uh, the healthier and more joyful you'll be. So as always, I hope that helps.